Hello and welcome, it's Chris from Christopher Hall Training and welcome to this week's tutorial where we're going to be talking about what is spondylolisthesis. It's a bit of a mouthful but it's a condition of the spine that people do suffer with so we're going to look at what it is and we're also going to look at some of the goals of exercise for it as well. Um, you can exercise with this condition, it doesn't have to be debilitating, it doesn't have to stop you from uh, doing all the things that you want to do. So that's what we're going to get stuck into. Um, but before we do that, just a quick bit of business. Before you get started, I just wanted to mention my social media, which you'll see in the top right hand corner of the screen. You've got Twitter at Christopher Hole, Facebook Christopher Hole Training, Instagram Christopher Hole, and YouTube Christopher Hole. So please do like, follow, and subscribe. It'd be great to have you on board. Also, please do comment below anything that you might have learned, found interesting, or a question that you might have about the information. I'd be happy to answer it. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a URL, which is the description to my lower back pain and spine health free webinar. During it, I cover my entire method that I use with people day to day in the gym to help them overcome lower back pain and maintain a better spine health. If you come with pen and paper, you can learn it for yourself. Alternatively, at the end of the webinar, you'll have the opportunity to enroll as an online client and work with me one-to-one -one via my online training platform. We'll then create a program tailored to your needs and help you reduce lower back pain, improve spine health, and build greater core strength and stability to protect your lower back. So thank you for watching and back to the tutorial. Spondylolithesis is a condition of the spine and more specifically a condition of the vertebrae that occurs mainly at the base of the spine so we're talking L5 S1 is the most common place but it can be seen at L5 L4. Now what we have are two conditions you've got spondylolysis and spondylolithesis. Now spondylolysis is a defect or fracture of one or both of the wing shaped parts of the vertebrae. So you can see on this little diagram here it's a defect or it's a fracture of the processes of the spine. Now obviously then what can happen is the disc then, uh, sorry the vertebrae then can slip forward on the top of the disc creating spondylolithesis. Now when it comes to exercise you can exercise as long as the spondylolysis has been um, is being monitored. Now with regards to the exercises that you can do yes there are specific exercises that you need to think about doing and not doing but more importantly is the way that you do those exercises. So what we're going to talk about in the next slide is a little bit more about the goal of exercise when it comes to spondylolithesis. The goal of exercise is to first stabilize the spine and then what will start to then happen is to reduce stress on the spine. So we aren't necessarily going to be talking about specific exercises within this but the, the type of direction that you want to be going in with regards to exercise. I'll put like specific exercises in future videos and you can watch out for those but for now it's just talking about how you go about doing the exercise and the direction that you want the exercise to go in and some goals and some stepping stones to, 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 to sort of walk through before you get to what I would describe as fitness exercise because there is a difference between sort of the therapeutic side of stabilizing the spine and fitness exercise. What a lot of people do in rehabilitation is they use fitness techniques in the rehabilitation realm and the, the two don't necessarily match. So what we need to first establish is that rehabilitation or the difference between rehabilitation and fitness exercise. Now, as we stabilize the spine, what this is then gonna do this is then going to start reducing stress on the spine because if we use certain exercises like sit-ups, crunches or if we do squats incorrectly so we start bending at the spine if we do squats or if we start doing too many twisting exercises or twisting from the spine exercises then that's only going to increase stress. So those are the types of exercises that we want to sort of remove from the training program and we want to start 
sort of getting the spine into a position or into a neutral position and then stiffening the torso around it so it holds it in position. So what we're doing is we're creating movement from the hips and the shoulders and then we're maintaining posture throughout the spine. What you might read is that you need to increase flexibility around the spine, but increasing flexibility around the spine can have an adverse effect on the spondylolisthesis because you've got the vertebrae that is, or has the potential for slipping forward and moving, you don't want too much flexibility around that because then it will allow that additional movement. There is, or it is wise to have uh, stretched muscles around the spine, but they don't want to be too relaxed. What we want to be able to do is have the muscles relaxed enough so that we can stiffen the torso appropriately. What a lot of people do is they don't do the stretching, the muscles are really stiff around it, and that sort of can hold it in an adverse position. The muscles don't necessarily contract in the right way, they aren't sequenced correctly, and things like that. So that can have its own problems. So yes, we do want to have a degree of flexibility, but that really wants to be more the muscles are then relaxing, so that when we stiffen the torso with plank, side plank, shoulder bridges, um, sort of chopping exercises, lifting exercises, whatever it might be, we are then able to pre-brace and pre-stiffen the torso so that it holds the spine in place so that we can then go and complete the exercises. So where it is useful to have that flexibility, you've got to know the purpose of the flexibility and it's not because you want lots of movement of the spine. It's because you want the muscles to communicate well with each other so that when you stiffen, it holds the torso in position. So hopefully that's given you a better idea of sort of the goal of exercises. I have dropped in a few of the exercises, but you need to know how to perform them correctly. So again, if you come onto the, onto the webinar, which is a free webinar, I'll start sharing with you more things that you can start doing, that you can start putting in place for your rehabilitation, or if you're in that position, that uh, fitness type exercise, because it can be done. You've just got to do it in the right way, at the right time, with the right exercises. So many thanks for watching. My name is Chris from Christopher Hole Training. I will speak to you in the next tutorial.